York, Manhattan, the center of art and culture. Now tea becomes a new trend and spread to New Yorkers quickly. I prefer tea, I just like the taste better. The caffeine affects me differently, so I appreciate it more. A cup of tea is very relaxing, and it gives you a sense of, um, a certain sense of composure. Well, I'm a vegetarian, and I read a lot of like health journals and stuff, so I've been trying to cut back on coffee, So, and I've gotten more and more into it. I like green tea, I like herbal, mints. I really enjoy green tea though, like for the antioxidants, um, and I believe I gave up coffee fully, because it's so much more calming, and it's just more elegant. According to the Washington Times, there were 200 tea shops in the United States seven years ago. Since then, it has increased, and tea has reached to $6,160,000. Why is it happening here? What makes people drink tea? There are more than 300 tea shops in New York City. Unlike ready-made beverages, sometimes tea requires a lengthy inventiveness that is conducive to the free expression of individual tastes. New Yorkers are transforming this culture of a tea bag to something that is uh, more refined. Uh, they have an interest in many things, in wine, in other ingredients, and so they always want to try something new. Uh, while black breakfast teas are a traditional favorite, Assam, Earl Grey even, uh, they're more adventuresome. They try the oolong teas, uh, famous in China and Taiwan, and have taken a real liking to them. Uh, the oolong teas have an incredible range of flavor and aroma, and that might be why. It was just more obsession. It just became a, fa a complete fascination for me um, that I was feeling so good from drinking the tea, and I wanted to understand more about that. People find their taste through drinking tea, and tea houses have increased more and more with Asian tea culture. From a couple of years ago, people start to drink more tea. Customers are mostly interested about like Japanese tea, Chinese tea. Um, but most of the customers know what they want to drink already before they come in, like such as like black tea or green tea, oolong tea, herbal tea. So, but we promote more of the tea from Asia. Tea culture is now more knowledgeable. They want to know what flesh it is, which is the picking. They want to know where garden it comes from, which is the area of the, where the tea is grown. And they want to know, you know what flavor enhancements there are. A lot of people don't like flavor enhancements. Like, you know, the rose, they put oil inside. So ours we don't, but a lot of people want to know the finer details, so they're getting more smart, which is good. This is tea. Filling a cup, not with indigestion, not with nerves, not with sleepless nights. This is tea. This is calm stomach, quiet nerves, deep sleep. This is tea. Steamy, hot, hearty, delicious, invigorating. The lift that leaves you with a nice, warm glow. So good, so good for you. Make it hefty, hot, and hearty. Take tea and see. Drinking tea gives relaxation and refreshes the head and mouth. Tea is drunk to forget the sin of the world, wrote Chinese sage Tian Yang. Tea was discovered in China by BCE 2737, and tea is the stuff of myths and legends. 
According to Chinese legend, the god of agriculture would chew leaves, stems, and roots of various plants to discover medicinal herbs. If he consumed a poisonous plant, he would chew tea leaves to detoxify the poison. Also, Buddhists believe that Buddha himself discovered tea. Originally, tea is from southern China. Uh, it comes from Yunnan province, and from there it uh, spread across Asia because Buddhism was traveling through Asia as well, and that was one of the main ways that tea traveled. When I talk about tea, I'm really talking about one plant. All tea comes from the same plant. It comes from the Camilla sinensis plant, and this is the Camilla sinensis plant. It's a woody, as you can see, a deciduous plant. It is usually cultivated so that it's waist high, it's sort of picking height, although if you let it grow, it can go 80 feet tall. And I've seen in the jungles of China some very old plants, over a thousand years old. It is indigenous to southern China, uh, sort of Yunnan province, Golden Triangle, northern Thailand, even into northern India. And that's the region that uh, this plant uh, comes from. This one plant is responsible for all the different types of tea that are made. All of these teas have this tea, this plant, as their basis. Now, like wines, where you have one grape that's responsible for all the different types of wine, uh, the differences are varietals. You have a Merlot grape, you have a Cabernet grape, and the same thing with the tea plants. There are different varietals, and then there's different regions that they're grown in. So the region has a lot to do with it, whether it's a high elevation, sandy soil, well-drained, you know, very humid. Uh, all of these things will uh, combine with the ability of the farmer to make the type of tea that you're making. Hey, can I ask you a question? Sure. What, is, um, what is the deal with white tea? That's what I want. What, is it more healthy? 